Okay, I've never been as excited for an Apple iOS update as I have been for iOS 15 because of the release of Apple's focus mode. So what is focus? Well, in Apple's own words, focus is a feature that helps you concentrate on your tasks by minimizing distractions. The reason I'm so excited about that is because a couple of years ago, I read a book by Cal Newport called Digital Minimalism. This book is essentially a manifesto for how you can reduce your addiction to your phone or other electronic devices. And it is a really good read and I highly recommend you, you do so. But in a nutshell, the main lesson I took away from that book was firstly that apps on your phone, such as social media, are literally trying to make you addicted to using their apps on a daily basis and to grab your attention. And ultimately I learned that the best way to fight that addiction to your phone is to minimize distractions, notifications, alerts, and so on. And so Apple's focus mode is exciting because I believe it is designed to do exactly that. And so in today's video, I wanna talk you through how to set it up, how to use it effectively, and kind of show you how I'm using it for my work focus mode. So let's jump in. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly pull up my settings and navigate to focus. And the first thing you, you can do is choose your focus mode. And the nice thing about Apple is it's already given you a few common situations where you might want to focus. So you've got driving, sleep, work, do not disturb, which is kind of like a blanket thing, and personal. But the nice thing that Apple will let you do is customize it yourself. And so in the top right, you can press something it's already got some other presets, such as doing fitness, gaming, mindfulness, reading. And so you could potentially conceive of many more scenarios where you want to limit the amount of notifications or apps you want to focus on during that time. And so I think that's a really cool feature. Um, I'm just gonna hide that away for a second and talk you through the rest of the process using my work setup. So the next step is to control what notifications are coming in whilst you're in your specified mode. In this example, I'm using work. And this is actually broken down into people and applications. So for people, I've basically only allowed my partner um, to communicate me while I'm in work. Some people might want to tweak that differently, but all of my work communications are on my work laptop. There's no connection to my phone, and so the only real person I want to be able to message with my partner. And secondly, for applications, what I've done is only allow apps that I think are relevant to my work, helping me get my work done, and so on. And this is just a handful, um, like things like Calendar, Task Manager, um, Habits. Forest is a really good one for like focusing. It's essentially a Pomodoro timer. I can talk about it in another video if you care. Um, but basically, by having these as allowed apps, those notifications will come through. The others are kind of um, partially blocked whilst this mode is active. The next, and I think most potentially powerful part of this feature is the ability to limit visual distraction. So if we scroll down here, you can see there's a number of options. Home screen is what I'm going on to. So there's two things here. First of all, hide notification badges. Now these are the little red badge with a number typically that sits on the top right corner of an application. Um, I personally never have these on regardless, but I encourage you to do the same for this scenario at least, purely because I think they add unnecessary stress um, or, or mental tax on your brain that you don't really need, right? I don't need to know how many unread emails I've got, um, every time I'm looking at my phone, I wanna know that when I go to actually look at my email. And so the badge doesn't really serve me any purpose except to stress me out. But secondly, custom pages is the cool thing. So what you can actually do, if I tip, tap edit pages here, it's pulled up every page on my phone, my home screen. And basically I've designed a specific page for work. And so this only has the apps that I want to be able to use whilst I'm in work mode. And again, this is only things like the calendar, the forest app, um, 
some music, flashcards. It's very, very limited. And you can deselect all the other ones that has all your other fun apps that you don't want distracting you during your work day. So I've selected that, I'll press done, and we're all good. And so you can conceivably, if I just jump back here, create a page for every single focus mode you want to create. So if you had a gym one, you might have music, podcasts, and your workout app or your running app, um, and so on. And you might be thinking now, okay, what if I want Spotify on both my work mode, my personal mode, and my gym mode? Well, the beauty of the recent updates is that you can actually have duplicate instances of apps. So I've just gone back to my home screen. You can see top left, I have Spotify. Well, what you can actually do is if you go to your app library, hold down on the app that you want, and you can kind of drag it across to your, your home page. And you can see there I've got two instances of Spotify. Obviously unnecessary right now, but you can see why that exists because if you've got different pages that show up at different times, you need duplicate instances of apps. So that's really, really cool that it's not been overlooked um, and that Apple have kind of allowed that. I think the third and final key bit for the work feature is that you can set it up to turn on automatically based on either time of day, location based, or based on using a certain app. There is also a fourth option, which I haven't tested out yet, which is smart activation. And this says it will turn work on at relevant times throughout the day based on signals like your location, app usage, and more. I think it might be quite effective. I don't really want to rely on that. And so I'd rather specify my own definitions. Um, and in this instance, I've said weekdays nine till five, my work hours, and whilst I'm at my work location, it will turn on. So I think that's a really powerful way to just help you kick you into gear and automate thinking about when you're switching like mental modes. Okay, so unfortunately, as cool as all of this is, I need to highlight three big limitations that I see with the current iteration of focus mode from Apple. The first limitation of focus mode is that for spotlight search and the app library, regardless of what focus mode you're in and what apps are allowed to have notifications, any app will show up if you use those. So if I just show you now, if I pull up, turn on my work focus, I've done that now. And so the only page that I have is this one with like eight apps. If I do a spotlight search and say Facebook, it comes up. And similarly, if I swipe right, uh, left to the app library, you can see there's Reddit, there's Facebook, there's YouTube and whatnot. And so you can envisage here that whilst I've tried my best to limit my ability to use distracting apps, um, I might start just creating a habit where I reflexively search for a distraction or look in the app library for a distraction. So I've only gone for so far and I think a really nice improvement that hopefully we could see in the future from Apple is actually when you're in work mode, it will only return the apps that are allowed in work mode in your search, in your app library. So that's a big limitation that I hope gets fixed in the future. Okay, now the second limitation is to do with the actual notifications. So you saw earlier that we limited notifications from nearly all of my apps, but are very few. Well, what actually happens when you've got this work or whatever focus mode on, notifications come through, you won't get a banner, you won't get an, a sound or a buzz or anything like that. But when you're on your um, notification center, you'll have a grouped um, notification window, I'll show it on the screen now, that says while in work focus and it will say just the title of the app that delivered a notification, so whether it's WhatsApp or Facebook or whatever. And so they're only partially hidden, right? If I happen to see that, look at my phone and see that, if anything I'm more curious about what that notification is. It's like giving me less information, like less detail. It's actually increased my curiosity. And so 
again, it's only gone so far as to limit the notification. It's still there, it's still accessible. I'd much prefer it if that didn't exist, nothing showed up in Notification Center, and then when I turned off Work Focus Mode, then that notification grouping would show up and say, whilst you were in focus mode, you got these. Here you can now have a look at them. Um, so it seems a little bit silly in a way, um, and I hope it could get improved on in the future. And the third and final limitation is again to do with notifications, but specifically from people. Now, an inevitable symptom of focus mode being an Apple feature is that it's going to work nicely with Apple applications and not nicely with non-Apple applications. And so, yes, you saw earlier that I only allowed notifications from my partner, but that's only going to work on things like iMessage, FaceTime, phone calls and so on. If she messaged me on WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Snapchat, Slack, whatever mess communication medium you use, which a lot of people use those ones, um, it's gonna block them and bring them into these kind of blocked notifications. And so um, it kind of is naturally forcing you to use the Apple ecosystem and that walled garden, which um, I guess comes with the territory of it being an Apple app. So it's just something to, to note that it is a limitation of people notifications. Right, so that sums it up. That is Apple's focus mode. And I think it is a fantastic, exciting development for iOS users and people looking to regain control over their digital lives, to limit distraction, to limit notifications. However, we've seen in the second half of this video that there are evident limitations to how far it goes to limit those distractions and those notifications. And hopefully it's a case of this is their first try, it's gonna iterate, it's gonna get better um, as people feed back to it. Time will tell. Hopefully if people watch this video, share it, shout out to Apple about it, maybe things will change, but we will see.